you had people running them on the phones. And I think that was one of those phones where they kind of say it's a blank slate. You just put whatever you want on it. We give you X server. You give you give you the password and uh, making the phone calls and it becomes complicated because you need to have some like proprietary-ish things to kind of ensure you don't use uh, Spectrum for regulatory reasons. Like there is no practical reason why you couldn't do that. But I think for them to sell it to you over the counter, they want to like you know get the FCC or whatever to approve these things. Of course, you could just change the code later and install something else on it and just, like, exceed the... Uh, yeah, the, the, and you're hitting the nail on the head. It's the bureaucratic red tape you have to go through to actually get it in the hands of... Um, I Off the top of my head, I can't think of any UK yeah. phone The FCC was spraying some FUD against uh, Linux uh, uh, around 2007. I think Evan Moglin got involved after they had done that. So the FCC was basically complaining about open source being dangerous and whatever, and I, I think one of the things they're afraid of is having those components in the phone that actually allow you, non-physically by software, to change the frequencies to, at which you can broadcast things. And it's funny because we live in a society where not only like we have the so-called intellectual property and like you know property rights and all that, all of a sudden like you're not even allowed to communicate in certain frequencies. And uh, if you listen to people who are very much experts in the field, I'll tell you it's just a lot of basically BS because because the uh, the amount of damage you could possibly do if you uh, exceed the, uh, um, the this frequency it's just all about excessive control. But even if you allow people to to communicate a bit more freely, and, you know, it's not like planes are going to fall down from the sky and like you know you. Like, well, it's, it's, and and the really funny thing about that is. Um, I don't understand why the FCC is opposed to that because they can actually fine you at the wazoo if you really do violate those laws. You know, yeah. so they, basically they, the FCC could just put people around to write these $250 plus tickets to people. I mean, it'd be a new revenue stream for the broke U.S. government. I mean, why are they well, once, once you teach the uh, policeman how to uh, track the frequencies, <laughs> something like well, it, it, that's not hard. You know, they make right. devices now where they can go. No, because because it, it's <laughs> like, no, no. I'm, I'm just imagining it, like like people walking around with those machines. You know, people like you know breaking into houses and they're going around checking frequencies, saying, knocking on the door. Excuse me, miss. I think you have exceeded the frequencies and give you like a ticket. It'll be kind of a strange thing, wouldn't it? So they prevent. They prefer to limit what we can do, basically to take away freedom. Uh, you know, if you're out in nature, you couldn't like use the frequencies you want. Uh, but you know, they could actually uh, use common sense or something to uh, to uh, counter the threat or the perceived threat. Well, and, and you know, really, the people who would be screwing around with that are technical people who'd be hacking around it. And they know, you know, what they're, you know, they're, they're, the average user wouldn't even screw with changing the frequencies, you know. That's... Well, if they know, well, yeah. Well, we'll now move on to our next topic because time is pressing on. And here in the UK, it's certainly a little bit late for me, and uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. So I like a, an early ish night. Um, Roy, what's the next topic of the day? Well, first of all, we might as well go to the songs. So we'll go to Fresh, uh, to Precious by Mini Pop.
so let's crack on. Roy, back over to you. Yeah. So apologies, it's kind of plugged in very fast a few uh, topics which I thought would work. Uh, mostly to do with today's news, not to do with yesterday's, the day before yesterday, because we were trying to put this episode out today. And anyway, the major news, the only major news I found, to be honest, were to do with Android, so probably we'll see a theme here. We're talking about phones and Android. Uh, the desktop with Linux is not, you know, not thriving, in, uh, with the exception of talking about Ubuntu, which we did before. There is no major news about uh, the Linux desktop. If you care about code names and wallpapers, there is the... Uh, was it called uh, the, the Menji? Was it called Beefy? Uh, something? Uh, what was it called? Something Beefy, I can't remember. Yes, yes, the fedora. Uh, something like delicious uh, or magical something Beefy. Uh. Anyway, so the fedora has got a new code name, new logo, which I think is quite uh, stupid, because I think that's not exactly what you want to get across to uh, enterprises to use that. Uh, they have this kind of a hot dog picture and something that, which you, you would think to be associated with like bubble gums or something, I don't know, summer. Um, some yeah, sort of maybe, maybe they're trying to copy what Android's doing, you know, frozen yogurt, ice cream, gingerbread. Maybe they figured that's the new marketing strategy. I don't know. <laughs> I always get hungry at an Android conference. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's 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 truly really strange they chose this name, uh, uh, but that, that's a selection of people. I think they were trying to be a bit silly, you know, just just for the sake of the because uh, the code name isn't being used that much. You know, it's the same if you look at Ubuntu; it's got a new name as well. And they didn't use the P to make a penguin; they used to uh, use something else. It sounds similar. Pantolin. But I suppose I think yeah. wasn't, wasn't it pantolin, which is yeah. for the benefit of our listeners. It's a type of lizardy anteater type thing um, from the picture I saw on, on Wikipedia. Um, Yes, so I, I I can't remember it's where it lives. I think it would be a bit strange if it's just penguin because it's already associated with just a kernel. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 I, 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 I don't. I, I'm I almost think it's a bit presumptuous for anything Linux based to go after anything penguin or tux or yada yada because it's like really it really it's just, it doesn't it's a bit a bit presumptuous. I I've, I've always wanted to see something use like uh, canines. Yeah, but I also I'm not I'm not a big fan of uh, the Android uh, names and actually the the ones with Fedora where they kind of put foods in the thing. I, I'm just thinking that's, that's kind of tasteless because when I use the phone, I, I don't want to think about eating my phone or something. And Android, <laughs> you, you know, it gives these really nice names like Honeycomb and stuff. And I was just thinking, no, 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 don't call it like foods. And uh, and that's the I thing. Android think... 4.0 is supposed to come soon. Yeah, but I I think what they're doing is. Uh, the... Main, mainly heading towards the mainstream user because now that the mainstream has got into technology as it were they want names that uh, actually mean something to them and maybe the names like gingerbread and that type of thing all sort of relates to a to an average user better yeah than, uh, at the end of the day those are both geeks having fun and marketing yeah well apple's using that cat <laughs>